So children, today we are going to revise the lesson transport of substances in animals and plants. Children, already you are aware some substances they need to be transport, transported. They need, uh, they need to be transported. Number one, food. Food is produced after digestion. It goes into the blood and transport from one place to other place. Oxygen. Number three, waste products. Number four, water and minerals. So these things, they need to be transported uh, in our body. Okay. For this transportation, like this transport takes place both in animals and plants. First, we are going to discuss in animal. These things are transported in animals. How? First, we are going to discuss unicellular animals. Unicellular animals like amoeba and paramecium. Children, unicellular body no system organ system is there directly through semi permeable membrane all the exchange of things takes place like food it takes with the help of semi permeable membrane oxygen by the process of diffusion carbon dioxide also comes out by the process of diffusion waste product directly come out through the semi permeable membrane in other like hydra okay in other uh, organism like hydra water transport food and oxygen to all parts of the body okay in multicellular animals when we talk here we are talking about animals when we talk about multicellular animals we are having proper system and that system is called circulatory system circulatory system consist of blood blood vessels and heart okay so in multicellular organism uh, we have proper circulatory system that contain this blood blood vessels and heart now we are going to discuss about circulatory system in humans okay how the things transport in humans transport in humans we have proper circulatory system we have proper circulatory system as i told you it consists of blood children and blood vessels there are three types of blood vessel i will tell you first i am going and heart we are having first i am going to tell you about blood okay blood is a fluid okay it is a type of tissue it flows in blood vessels and <clears throat> it forms a medium medium through which nutrients important gases water and waste product are transport transported inside the body okay blood it can consist of three things again first is rbc okay sorry blood uh, is made of two blood has two part one it is having cells other is plasma plasma is pale liquid it makes 95% of the blood okay and rest part uh, is the 90% we say and 10% is cells okay it is pale yellow liquid plasma is percentage i am removing because it is not written in the book it is pale yellow in color and these cells are there in the plasma okay several cells floating in this uh, pale yellow liquid plasma and these cells are three types 
red blood cells or RBCs. Okay, they are flat, disc like like poppins. Okay, you have seen poppins, they contain red pigment. That red pigment gives red color to RBCs, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is very important. It is the only protein that carries the oxygen. Okay, they contain red pigment, I told you, that is called uh, hemoglobin. This pigment combined with oxygen and forms hemo oxyhemoglobin and it carries this oxyhemoglobin from all cell and give this oxygen to the cell okay any other um, cell they cannot carry which are having hemoglobin they can carry so which is having hemoglobin rbcs red blood cells second is wbcs white blood cells white blood cells they are irregular in shape larger than rbcs and uh, they uh, they help in protecting our body from disease causing microorganisms okay they are larger in size third we are coming platelets they are irregular in shape they are irregular in shape they help in clotting of blood sometime you have seen cut is there and after some time the blood clot is there and uh, uh, blood clot is there and this protect these platelets they protect uh, they help in clotting the blood in wherever the cut is there okay now coming to the blood vessel second blood vessel blood vessel again three types blood vessels three type first arteries second veins third capillaries okay children arteries they care they carry blood away from the heart away from the heart and they carry blood toward the heart from all parts of the body they are thick walled they are thin walled okay they are deeply placed under the skin and blood moves in them with high pressure and they are superficially placed and blood does not move under pressure they have no valves they have valves okay children so this is the difference capillaries they are thin walled blood vessels and form a network of extremely tiny blood vessels between artery and vein okay we can find this wherever the artery and veins are meeting we find capillaries hello children today we are going to discuss about heart first we will discuss the structure of the heart later later on uh, working of heart okay what is heart the heart is a four chambered muscular organ that pumps blood into the blood vessels four chambered one two three four okay four chambered muscular organ and this pumps the blood into the blood vessels the pressure that this pumping generate is enough for the blood vessel to carry this blood to all parts of the body. Okay, children. The heart, you know, it uh, uh, like able to do rhythmic contractions and relaxation. Because of the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscles, this pumping of blood takes place. And we also call this rhythmic uh, contraction and relaxation what heart beats you know about the heart beat the lub dub sound comes when you put your palm on your chest left side you can hear this lub dub sound and we call that heart beat okay a normal heart beats uh, around 60 to 80 60 to 80 times per minute 
टाइम्स पर मिनट ओके एंड चिल्ड्रेन दिस बीट हेल्प ऑफ एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट वी कैन मेजर दिस हार्ट बीट विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट स्टेथोस्कोप एंड वी मेजर द ब्लड प्रेशर विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट वी कॉल दैट स्फेगमो मेनोमीटर सो आई टोल्ड यू टू थिंग्स वी कैन हेयर दिस हार्ट बीट बाय स्टेथोस्कोप and measure the blood pressure by sphygmo menu me sphygmo manometer manometer okay so this much is clear to all of you now i am going to tell you about the structure of the heart the four chambers of the heart are the right auricle upper chambers are called uh, auricles okay the this side like if you stand like this so this is your left side and other side this is your left side this is your right side so this is right auricle four chambers right auricle okay four chambers right auricle this is your this is left auricle l only i am writing down here auricle this is right ventricle left ventricle okay left ventricle now how it functions the right the right auricle open in the right ventricle and left auricle uh, right auricle uh, open in right ventricle and left auricle opens in left ventricle what happen children how it functions this blue color this is the vena cava this is not mentioned in the book i am writing down here this is main vein vena cava okay this vena cava collect from two sides this vena cava is coming from the lower side and upper side this blue color vena cava collects the deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body and brings it where in right auricle clear right auricle gets deoxygenated blood it gets deoxygenated blood means without oxygen from all parts of the body through main vein this blood is pumped into the right ventricle there are two valves this orange color you are seeing the valves okay the valves are there you know when the heart beat why this heart beat takes place when the upper part is squeezed you know this valve open this valve open this valve valve open okay i am going to tell you again when the heart is squeezed what happen this valve opens okay and the blood goes this side okay from right auricle the blood comes into the right ventricle what happen right ventricle now it is having deoxygenated blood and now this when the ventricle will squeeze this blood will go in this what is this this is pulmonary artery children if you remember i told you there is only one artery that carries deoxygenated blood pulmonary artery okay what happen when the auricle squeezes this valve opened and 
deoxygenated blood gone to the right ventricle when ventricle squeezes contracted the blood goes through this these are the valves the valves are like door like structure they open when the contraction takes place when this squeezes only these valves open this does not open they are designed in such a manner that when this squeezes auricular squeezes this valve open and when ventricle squeezes this valve open okay so blood goes into the pulmonary artery from pulmonary artery it goes to the lung it goes to the lungs okay the blood now in the lungs and you know you have learned learned about that that in lung the purification of blood takes place carbon dioxide moves out and oxygen comes in the blood now the blood after purification it will come to the hey, this side this is your pulmonary vein this is what this is pulmonary vein pulmonary vein this is the only vein which carries the oxygenated blood it brings back oxygen rich blood from the lung and pours it into the left auricle this blood comes in the left auricle a left auricle when it squeezes these valves they open and this blood pure blood or oxygenated blood goes into the left ventricle when left ventricle squeezes this goes into the what this aorta this main you are seeing this goes in this aorta aorta from aorta it goes in all part of the body this is aorta main artery aorta is main artery and vena cava is main vein okay now again i am repeating you know when auricles they squeeze contract ab aisa nahi ki iski alag squeeze hogi iski alag when auricle squeeze both the auricle will squeeze or contract the impure blood come to the right auricle from a right auricle to the right ventricle and pure blood come from the left auricle to the left ventricle clear okay when the auricle is contracted now what happened it's a time for ventricle to contract when ventricle contract from right ventricle the deoxygenated blood will go in pulmonary artery okay pulmonary artery and here when ventricle is contracting the oxygenated blood will go to aorta okay to aorta so from here it will go to the lung purification will take place it will come to the uh, auricle so this way the our heart functions okay and one more thing i am going to tell you uh, left ventricle it has what thicker wall it pumps blood to the farthest part of the body through the aorta it is uh, contract in this manner that the blood moves very fast and why it does not damage the sides because the walls are thick okay children this this is it and i told you an artery carry uh, carries uh, an artery carries pure blood and a vein carries impure blood impure means deoxygenated blood the exceptions are what pulmonary artery and pulmonary hello children today's our topic is transport in plants children plants they also need to transport substances some substances water mineral and food prepared by the plants okay so water and minerals they are transported by roots to the leaves 
and then the food manufactured in the leaves is transported to different parts of the plants okay how do they transport they have system for transporting water they have xylem water and minerals they have xylems xylem and for transporting food they transport food with the help of phloem okay children you have learnt about xylem and phloem also before this xylem tissue act as a pipeline and takes water and mineral from the roots uh, water from roots to the stem and to the leaves and food in plant is manufactured by the leaves all you know once the food is prepared it needs to be sent to all parts of the plants uh, all parts of the plant the process by which this takes place we call that translocation okay special types of tissues as i told you phloem they act as pipeline and carry prepared food to all parts of the plants now children i am going to tell you what is transpiration transpiration is a process transpiration okay transpiration you know plants they keep on roots of the plants they keep on absorbing water and giving to the leaves okay giving to the leaves the roots they are absorbing water this it goes through the xylem to the stem and to the leaves you all you know this it is a continuous process water is continuously being absorbed by the root and lost from the leaves you know excess of water keeps on going and this water it does not stay in the leaves it moves out through the leaves and we call this process transpiration the losing of water from the plant in the form of water vapor this water goes out in the form of vapor okay in the form of vapor is called transpiration it mainly occurs through the stomata present in the leaves children lower side of the leaves i told you what are there this is suppose this is lower side there are tiny holes are there these holes are called stomata so this water vapor moves out through stomatas okay the opening and closing of uh, stomata controlled by the amount of water lost during respiration so children generally we say exchange of gases uh, like uh, during the day it takes carbon dioxide and gives out oxygen and photosynthesis process takes place during the day why the this water is going water keeps on going beta okay but during the day this photosynthesis process takes place and opening and closing of the stomata depends on the water lost during the transpiration now next thing we are going to discuss factors affecting the rate of transpiration this transpiration which we have just discussed moving out from the stomata water in the form of water vapor so what are the factors that affects the transpiration factors affecting rate of transpiration first factor is first trans uh, factor is 
So there are number of factors that affect the rate of transpiration. First factor is the condition of air. First factor is the condition of air. If air is dry, children. If air is dry, okay. The warmer the air, or drier the air. Uh, dry air is warm air is dry air okay the warmer the air higher is the transpiration rate of transpiration second the amount of moisture in air here we can say drier amount of moisture if more moisture is there then the rate of transpiration would be less amount the amount of moisture in air okay the lesser the amount of moisture in the air means if the air is dry then the higher is the transpiration and if the amount of moisture is more then the lesser is the rate of transpiration these two factors more factors are there i am going to discuss third one is the number of stomatas the number of stomatas found on the leaves children if more stomatas are there then transpiration would be more or less more and if the number of stomatas are less then the transpiration would be less so more the number of stomata higher is the transpiration next is size of the leaf size of the leaves if bigger the leaves are bigger then more stomatas would be there okay then the transpiration would be faster okay so these factors we had discussed now we are going to discuss importance of transpiration why it is important sabse important that it keeps on taking water and continuity is maintained importance of transpiration okay first is exchange of gases very important children very important point you know exchange of gases transpiration helps in opening and closing of stomata opening and closing of stomata opening and closing of stomata transpiration transpiration helps in opening and closing of stomata this help in gaseous exchange and the plant is able to absorb carbon dioxide from the air which is needed for photosynthesis second cooling effect children transpiration is what water vapor water vapor goes out and keeps the environment cool when you more trees are there around you that place is cool all you know that evaporation of water vapor gives out during transpiration uh, brings down the surface temperature of the plant okay thereby cooling it transpiration thus provide a significant cooling effect that also helps to prevent damage to plant cell due to overheating so when the uh, uh, transpiration takes place it cools the surrounding also the plant and the plant cells they are protected by this cooling because of heating it says they do not damage third is effect on mineral and water transport effect on mineral and water 
transport. Okay. So transpiration creates a low pressure effect effects on effect on mineral and water transport. Trans transpiration if it creates a low pressure and pulling force that pulls up water and mineral. This is similar to what happened when we drink juice or water through a straw. The water and minerals are then transported to different parts of the plant. Children, this I told you that what happened? Tree is there. These are roots. Okay. Tree. So, when the transpiration like this is leaf, the water vapor is moving out. What happened? You know, a pressure is created. Low pressure is created, so water moves and come this side. This way, the water is moving out and from root, more water is coming. Like when we suck a uh, cold drink from the straw, upper side we are sucking, so pressure is created, low pressure is created, and lower side, what happened? This drink comes, okay? That's all for today. Thank you, children. Hello children, today we are going to discuss excretion in animals. Children, what is excretion? The process of removal of waste product produced in the cell of the living organism is called excretion. As I told you, so many vital activities are taking place in the body and during those activities, during those reactions, large amount of waste is produced. Okay, so we are having like we are going to talk excretion in humans. The human body has specialized organs for the removal of various waste product formed in the body. These organs first is large intestine children like in digestive uh, system. When the waste is produced, okay. The undigested food is removed from the large intestine and expelled out of the body through the anus in the form of feces. Second, lungs. Children, lungs. You had learned about lungs in respiratory system. Carbon dioxide is produced as a waste product in our body cells during the process of respiration. Okay, when food is broken down to release energy, that time carbon dioxide is produced. This carbon dioxide is removed by the lung during exhalation process. Third is skin. Third is skin. Our skin helps in eliminating excess of water, urea, some salts and other metabolic waste. What thing I told you? Water, urea, some salts and other metabolic waste in the form of sweat. What is sweat children? Just go Hindi mein kehte hain pasina. Sweat is a liquid waste secreted from the sweat gland below the skin. So, sweat glands are present below the skin and they help in removing water, urea, some salts and other some mineral salts okay mineral salts now it is very important sweating is very important two ways it is important first it helps to remove excess water some salts urea as liquid waste from the body and second it maintains our body temperature it helps keep our body cool during summers okay in summers we sweat a lot so it keeps our body cool now number fourth kidney okay we are going to discuss about kidney in detail okay kidneys are the main excretory organs you are seeing in the picture in our body they help in eliminating urea water 
water water excess of water salts waste salts waste salts and okay and excess of water i told you already these three things are removed from our body excretory system in human consist of the following organs first is kidney first is kidney second is ureters there there is one pair of kidney one pair of ureters okay urinary bladder where it gets collected and fourth is urethra from where this is expelled out okay children so we have uh, now i have drawn this here first we are going to discuss about kidney a pair of kidney are present in humans these kidneys are situated at the level of the waist of either side of the vertebral column okay kidneys are brick red in color what is the color brick red and they are of bean shaped bean is clear raj rajma bean so it is bean shaped each kidney contains large number of coil tubes called nephrons children nephrons are filtering units they are like this okay and tube is attached in this long tube you are going to study about this nephron in detail in higher classes so nephrons are filtering unit and in this capillaries are there now you know arteries and veins artery vein and in between what is there capillaries now the concept is clear so there are millions of nephrons are there in the kidney okay nephrons they act as filter when the blood enters reaches the two kidneys it contains both useful and harm, harmful substance this blood is coming okay it contains both useful and harmful substances the useful substances are absorbed back into the blood because in capillaries exchange is taking place so uh, useful substances they are absorbed back in the blood and the waste and harmful subst okay the useful uh, i told you the useful substances are absorbed back into the blood and the waste product dissolved in water are removed from the kidneys kidneys as yellowish liquid called urine water and the uric acid filter and it goes to the tube and ultimately from this tube it goes to the ureter okay it goes to the ureter i told you about the nephron the nephron act as a filter and removes harmful substances clear children millions of nephrons are there they act as filter and they remove harmful substances in the form of urine the urine formed in the kidneys goes into the urinary bladder through the tube called ureters these yellow tubes you are seeing called ureters urine is stored in urinary bladder and is passed out from the body at regular interval through the urinary th through this opening we call that urethra okay children an adult human being normally passes about 1 to 1.8 liter of urine in 24 hours the urine consists of 95% water 2.5% urea and 2.5% other waste product products like uric acid and ammonia okay children now sometime what happened this kidney stops working and we say kidney failure is taking place okay kidney failure is taking place then what happened the waste product which it filters 
that start accumulating in the blood and the person may die due to that poisonous substances in a week or so okay the usual treatment for kidney failure is either dialysis or kidney transplant two things we can first is dialysis and second is kidney transplant first we are going to discuss about dialysis the process of cleaning the blood of a person by separating the toxic waste product using a dialysis machine is called dialysis here we use machine okay to perform dialysis the blood from the artery children you can see this in youtube also with uh, youtube videos that first what happened uh, uh, to perform dialysis the blood from an artery uh, of the patient arm is passed through the dialysis machine from artery it goes to the dialysis machine there this uh, purification takes place that thing that took place in nephron same thing take place in what dialysis machine okay and the waste product are removed from the blood the clean blood is pumped back into the veins this clean blood come back to the vein of the patient sir the dialysis continues till all the blood in the body has been cleaned this treatment has to be done regularly now next is if kidney failure is there so next thing we can do that is kidney transplant kidney transplant okay the damaged kidney can also be replaced by another per, uh, another person's healthy kidney by a surgical we have discussed excretion in uh, humans and uh, now we are going to discuss excretion in plants the main product excreted by plants are carbon dioxide and oxygen carbon dioxide and oxygen carbon dioxide is formed as a result of respiration process and oxygen is formed as a result of photosynthesis so both uh, the gases need to be excreted from the plants okay so day time we say plant gave oxygen excess of oxygen it is having and during the night because it cannot utilize that carbon dioxide so it excrete carbon dioxide during the night uh, in excess acha second is it also excretion uh, it also excrete what excess of water in the transpiration i told you transpiration process because root keeps on absorbing water and excess of water it removes through stomata third excessive salt excessive salts if there is a high level of salt present in water or in the soil like in marine water and all too much of salt is there or sometime we give manure and all too much of salt is there they usually get deposit uh, in, uh, in the plant as crystals okay they move out in the form of crystals gums raisins and latex children these are the excretory products of the plant but they are useful for us okay many old plants get rid of their toxic waste in the form of gum resins and latex we use these secretion to manufacture paints varnishes rubber and adhesives okay children bye bye